Welcome back to American Roots Outdoors. Your host, Alex Rutledge, along with my producer, co-host, Redbone Mike Crace. And on the phone, Redbone, we got Mr. Rob Elder, communication specialist for the Missouri uh, Hunt and Working Dog Association. Yeah. Rob, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you. Good to be on here. Rob and I was talking about the feral hog problem. We've got an event coming up soon uh, to address this issue of the feral hogs. Rob, again, welcome to the show. Tell people, I mean, where you live and what is your home area so they kind of get an, an idea of what area you're talking about. Well, I, I live around Wapakilla Lake in, in Greenville, Missouri. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's there's places that uh, the hogs are showing up, you know, where that they, they've, uh, not that they haven't been before, but because of the dry winter that we had or the dry spring and we didn't have any acorns, it it paid, made a, a greater effect on the landowners because the, there's no acreage for the hogs to eat in the woods. So therefore, this has been a really bad year for the farmers because you know the hogs are going to find something to eat. So that puts them in the landowners' fields, rooting up their fields. And uh, you know some of these guys have already tried trapping alone. Uh, you know I agree you can trap large numbers, but if you don't trap the, the reproducing sows or the adult hogs and most of the time, that's juveniles is what you mostly trap. Actually, I do some trapping myself, and I trapped 38 pigs. I did not trap an adult hog last summer. Wow. No so wow. you need to work, you know, in coordination with both. So uh, the, the only two natural predators they have is dogs and humans, and if we take them out of the equation, we'll be like what they were in the Appalachian Mountains at Georgia when people they were running people in the house. So... Uh, this, this is really a, a serious issue, uh, in my opinion. Okay, so what about what about your meeting? When is it? Where is it going to be? Okay, it's going to be at the Patterson Community Center, uh, June the 13th, and, and the meeting will start at 4 o'clock. And we're actually going to try to feed some feed people. I don't know if we'll have enough to feed everyone, to depend on the amount of people that show up. But if you're a landowner, uh, a concerned citizen, uh the, the legislators, they want to hear what you've got to say. You know, we've, we've kind of heard one side of this story for a, a long time, and uh, just recently there's been some other stories came out, like uh, in the ag newspaper, and, and actually I appreciate you guys having us on here so we can tell uh, what, what we think about what's going on. You know, we have a lot of listeners, Rob. And people are seeing hogs almost in every one of these areas that our show is being aired. So this is a serious problem, Redbone. Yeah, I think it is. And, and Rob, you know, I'm always interested because it seems like, okay, there's, there's hogs in some parts of the state, uh, and, and Arkansas included, and then not in others. Why is that? And it sounds like maybe your problem up your way is worse than we have it down here. In, in Oregon, Shannon, and Howe County. Is it because of the proximity of the Mississippi River? I mean, are they following the river up, or are they following the field crops, you know, out of southeast Missouri? Or why why are they moving into some areas more so than others? Well, sir, I, I would have to, I would just kind of have to express an opinion. Mm-hmm. I will say this back, uh, history tells us back in 1500s when DeSoto brought the hogs here that they actually used them as a traveling food source, and they migrated up the rivers. And I was actually raised on a hog farm when I was a kid, and I know a little bit about them. And, and yes, you know, I have not filmed them. I don't have hard evidence, but in my opinion, yes. Hogs have to have water. Yeah. You know, they can survive on in South Texas on mesquite beans, but they will navigate waterways. And if you've got a waterway that uh, that doesn't go dry, if you don't have hogs, uh, my opinion, again, it's not a question of if you have them, it's when you have them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so, Rob, what is what is your opinion on what should be done about this problem? Well, I think the, I think the problem and the solution all lies together. Uh, you know, first of all, I, I, I don't mean to bash the Department of Conservation or anybody. We have some trappers out there that are doing a really good job. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the problem I feel like is, is, is all the hunters and dog hunters have been tossed into this deal of being the bad guys when actually I feel like we're part of the solution. I, I know a couple of the trappers, they go out and they trap and, and they're doing a, I'm not, they're doing a good job. We need those guys to do that. Mm-hmm. This has actually worked on a small scale in other places 
If you talk to the county commissioner in Sabinaw, Texas, he'll tell you how to get control of the hogs. And simply the way you do that is you go out and you set up your traps and your cameras and you catch the 10 pigs that the two sows have had. And, and if they don't go in the trap when the gate falls, you have two trap smart, not trap wise, trap smart, trap smart. sows that will not go in the trap. You can't continue to go back and keep trying to trap them. You bring the dog hunters in or you tell the landowner to shoot them two sows and you have made a reduction in your population. If you just trap them, Leave the two sows out there. That's why we keep going back year after year. Fine. I know our goal is to trap the entire sounder, but it's simply not happening. If it was, we wouldn't have to go back to the same places year after year. And i give you an example, Peck Ranch. Uh, hogs have not been eradicated on Peck Ranch. That's one of the most regulated hunting areas in the state. Hunting is not allowed there, and, and it's infested with hogs. Uh, I think you need to do it in a coordinated effort. You, you need to get the hunters and the trappers, and you know we need to quit pointing fingers at each other and say, you know, sit down uh, and, co- and find some common ground about how can we start to get control of these hogs. Uh, if we don't, we're going to wind up like Texas, and, and I promise you, eradication will never come before control. I want to uh, say this, Mister Elder. I was raised with hounds in my life. From the time I could walk, my daddy was a houndsman. Everybody knew Elry Ozine Rutledge. He was a coyote dog man, running dog man, rabbit dogs, coon hounds, deer hounds back in the day. Uh, you know, I have the utmost respect for all houndsmen, especially the houndsmen that are respectable to landowners. Uh, that being said, you are right. I think we need to, to, to compromise here. We all need to come to a common ground and work together. And as the Chamber of Commerce president in to Missouri, that's exactly what we've done there. We've taken, got rid of the negative stuff, and we've all, uh, majority of us have forgot about the past, and we're looking forward to what we can do to accomplish the, the ultimate goal, and that is to do positive things. So to do positive things with this feral hog problem, uh, if I may ask you, what is the ultimate solution? Uh, you know, people's mouthing the dog runners, people's mouthing MDC. I want to hear your opinion what is the ultimate, in your opinion, to solve the feral hog problem in the Ozarks? Well, my, in my opinion, first of all, if anybody didn't hear anything else I had to say, i got to piggyback on what you said. Hunting with well-trained dogs is very effective, and it's the only method that can be used in, in areas where it's too remote to get a trap. Uh, okay, so that being said, yes, I'm not, I'm not opposed to trapping. Yes, you absolutely need to trap the hogs. That needs to be your first line of defense. And again, if you, for some reason you can't bring the dog hunters in there because they're next to a, a highway or something, let the landowner shoot them. You need to shoot them at night uh, with night vision. You know, we don't need to be so so particular about worried about somebody going to shoot a deer because you know, 95% of the people are good people, especially you know to be a a hunter, you can't be a felon. You have to have a uh, you have to have a pretty good record to hold us uh, to be able to own a firearm. So mm-hmm. we need to use all the tools in the toolbox, or kind of like this. It's like going to war, uh, but we're going to leave a, a, a certain branch of the military out. Hunters are very effective. We had three hundred thousand of them around in our beer woods, being told not to shoot a hog. I don't care how you slice it up. If it's dead, it does not reproduce. <laughs> Somehow, we need to sit down and and uh, and work together. Well, here, here's what I have to say. I have friends in Texas, and hog hunting is a way of life every day down there. They show me the deprivation that was done in their pastures, etc. You know what they have done to help control the numbers? They have hog hunting contests, and yes. they catch them alive. You got to catch them alive, <laughs> and they bang mm-hmm. with the dogs, tie their legs, and they bring them in. They weigh them. And the people with the most weight, the biggest boar, the biggest sow, they win prizes. And they get sponsors together to do this. And what they do is they take these hogs and they'll feed them up and even vaccinate some. Then they butcher them. Then they take the pork and have cookouts to help raise money for town events, school events, etc. That would be a great that would be a great deal to do. Here in the Ozarks, I think Redbone. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and you know, Alex, we have a, a mutual friend that's been on this radio show several years ago who was a, a helicopter pilot. Yeah, he invited us to go and hog hunting. Invited us to go hog hunting, and they, you know, they shoot these hogs in Texas. 
they run them with a helicopter and they shoot them out of a helicopter, which looks like a lot of fun. <clears throat> but I asked the gentleman, said, what happens to all these hogs that are just you know, over this thousand acres? You've got hundreds of dead hogs. And he said, when word gets out that we're going to be shooting hogs out of a helicopter, the roads around the fields are lined with people who need meat. Then as soon as we fly off, they go into the fields and they quarter the hogs out or whatever they want to do, and they take the meat home. So, you know, it's not like we want to just shoot hogs and leave them laying. I mean, I think every hunter would like to take those hogs, and if they don't want to eat them, give them to somebody that could use the meat. Well, MD say, MDC is saying that some of these hogs have diseases. Yeah, well, and, they, and they may, but... Your input, Bob. Check it out. Well, I could butt in there. Uh, we actually done a FIOA on in 2017 and less than one percent of the hogs tested uh, were tested positive for brucellosis and that is not harmful for human consumption if it's cooked properly I say, in most, 2017. Most cook out. yes absolutely and and zero tests for for pseudo rabies for the for the ones that were tested in 2017 i don't i don't have the records for the last couple of years but uh, they're not the disease-ridden creatures that they'd like for everybody to think that they are yes they probably need to be tested, but here's here's another big issue of mine. We kill ten thousand hogs, and we've just let them lay out there to rot on public property. That's we have not one in good. Four children. That's not good. We have, no, we have one in four children in our state that go without enough to eat. I don't care how you slice it up. That's not the right thing to do. Right. Something needs to be figured out. You know, it's way above me, but uh, there's people I'm sure that, uh, and there's other people feel the same way as I do, and yep. and I'm sure you being a hunter. I, I was never. Uh, I always believed if you kill something, you should. Yeah, eat it or make sure somebody does. And you know, Missouri has the Share the Harvest program. I mean, which uh, you know, those hogs could be distributed through the Share the Harvest, uh, which is primarily for deer and turkey. But and, and there are food pantries out there, Rob, all over the state that are begging for more food all the time. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. all the time. There's a place. There's a place in Poplar Bluff called the Bread Shed that we help out a little bit. Uh, that, that feeds hungry people, and they, they would love to have, uh, you know, meat to feed. You don't have to go to Africa to find hungry people. They live right down the road from me yep. in Wayne County. Absolutely, and, and here in Oregon and Shannon County as well. All right, Rob, we need to go to another break. We really appreciate you being on the show today. And, and again, get, tell people where the meeting's going to be, what time, and, and uh, you know, some of those specifics, because I'm sure a lot of people might like to sit in on this meeting. Okay, again, it's going to be June the 13th at the Patterson Community Center in Patterson, Missouri. It's going to start at 4 o'clock, and there will be some of the legislators uh, from the Department of Natural Resources Committee that will be there to answer. It's not really going to be a question and answer session. It's just going to be an opinion session. Uh, they want to hear what you got to say about the feral hogs. Well, Rob, we want to thank you on behalf of American Roots and all the uh, radio stations that airs American Roots Outdoors for addressing these issues because we all have realized how serious this issue has become. So I'm going to do my best to attend this event, Redbone. Maybe you and I could go together yeah. and we record it from our show. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, that day is my birthday, Mr. Rob. Oh, and oh well, <laughs> well, good deal. Then uh, we'll save a piece of cake for you. Then. Yeah, that, that'll work, <laughs> Rob. And, and I want to say this to everybody. Uh, we got to help with this hog problem. And uh, again, Mr. Rob Elders, thank you for being on the show. God bless you.